All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. We got some viewers over on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we're gonna be rocking and rolling here in a sec. We got the last two matches of the open tournament that started yesterday uh, morning. We got Clay Belvoir against Shu Chang Chow, who uh, managed to pull out a stopper of a match. And uh, I think we're about ready to get lagging here. In the booth today, I got uh, Patrick Nix over from Chalkbox. How's it going, Patrick? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think uh, things have been going pretty well. I saw you doing the Evo Sports stuff. Uh, yeah, some other stuff. Yeah, we're doing a lot of new things with Evo Sports technology. And uh, I had a great event yesterday here on the Chalkbox. We had an all-day Moscone Cup challenge. and uh, But this is really fun to watch here because uh, one of my favorite players to watch, Xu Cheng Chow, uh, is just having a heck of a tournament here. Coming in at his 637 Fargo rate and, you know, taking down some, some giants. And he's got two more giants ahead of him here with Clay Belvoir and then Stephen Fullen in, uh, the, uh, sitting in the hot seat. So big challenge for him. Uh, hopefully he got a good night's sleep and a good breakfast because uh, he's going to need it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I think uh, he knows Clay's game pretty well, and they already played a match in this tournament, I think. They were on uh, Table 5 on the Evo Sports stream uh, yesterday. I think I was kind of hopping back and forth between it. And from what I remember, I talked to Clay after the match on the stream, and he had a, he had a couple of uh, bad mistakes Xu Cheng did. And his, I think his first two racks, he missed two 10 balls, which was a pretty Ooh. huge swing of things. And I think he only Clay only won by three points or something like that so it could have been either way you know those two 10 balls go down it's a whole different game so um yeah i'm sure he wants a, a little bit of a revenge on that one yeah and you certainly you know you, you can't get away with missing 10 balls against clay belvoir yeah you know, for sure he's not going to get away with those you, know, you got to put the games away when you have them um but of course we all do it uh but yeah shu, shu chang has just been Nonstop impressing the heck out of me, uh, you know, for the last year and a half that I've been watching his game progress. And he just seems to get progressively better and better every time I see him. And uh, they got the place to themselves over here. Look at this. They've got uh, really, I mean, it's uh, it's like the, it's this is just for them. Yeah, pretty much. Open on the morning on a Sunday of the Super Bowl. I think... Uh... Makes it a little bit more of a spotlight match. Um, All right, let's yeah. check out his break here. All right, second row ball. So he switched it up. Uh, one thing I was commenting on yesterday was uh, him and Dan Louie were going back and forth, and they were both breaking from the uh, from kind of the nine ball spot, really like one ball away from the rail, from the long rails. Um, and talking to him in the commentary booth earlier, he was talking in that it kind of ties up a lot more of the rack. And so if it's kind of like breaking from the side in eight ball. If you trust yourself with clusters more than your opponent, then you kind of want to tie the table up to make it more difficult to kind of grind out racks as opposed to breaking wide open, leaving a wide open shot and letting your opponent run out, uh, for instance. So I think uh, I think he actually went in more towards center on this one. So maybe he's switching up his strategy a little bit against Clay. Who knows? Yeah, and thank you, Bo, in the chat. Appreciate your congratulations there. It was a hard-fought battle yesterday. Nice shot on the one to get down to the two. Look at that. Speed really control. moving it. Yeah, he's, I mean, he had to move that a long ways. Yeah, I mean, uh, out of the distance, distance yeah, there, yeah. you only have a 5% error rate, and you still end up, you know, three ball, four ball lengths away from your position. It's pretty pretty rough. <laughs> that was a great, great effort. Yeah, and I think he's just going to punt this two ball back up table, leaving the cue ball behind the eight, I believe, is what yeah, this he's looks, looking at here. He could do it the other way, too, play behind the six and separation along the two long rails. Either one, I think, is good. I like either side. Well, there's a good pass for the two to travel up table. Oh, he just didn't catch the eight ball. Yeah. You know, there's that nice open path for the two ball to easily get through without hitting anything to, get, you know. Yeah. I think the idea there is he. He was focused on getting the cue ball behind the eight. However, if he would have been focused on putting the two ball on the bottom rail, it wouldn't really matter all that much if totally. he got behind the eight. Yeah, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's that's like the overlooked part of it. I think sometimes that they 
you when you're when you're on point, you're really feeling it. It's the first safety of the mat of the rack. I don't know if playing a cue ball only safety is going to be as easy as it will be later on in the match. Yeah, nice shot there from Clay, staying down and getting that two ball in there. Yeah, when you're con trying to control the cue ball and the object ball, you have to prioritize one over the other, right? Mm -hmm. it, which one is my priority? Uh, you know, because you you can't split your brain equally between two things. One's got to be prioritized. Yeah, I just I feel like I've noticed a, a jump in, in my own game when I'm focusing on the oh here we go here we go a little jacked up yeah. little well, touchy shot and opportunity strikes. Yeah, I think uh, when when focusing on the on the object ball a little bit more on the safeties that you play, um, it tends to improve your percentage of just general success of achieving a containing safety, not necessarily getting you know the perfect hook that you want. Obviously, you know, it's higher risk, higher reward, but uh, a lot of the time you can get pretty easy safeties if you just know how to push an object ball to a certain area, you know? Right. But table safeties are very different than bar box, right? You can use that distance to gain the advantage. So what's he going to so, try to get on the purple five here? Might run into it, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, because it really doesn't have either corner... Uh, it's got to be banked or bumped. Mm -hmm. What do we got in the chat? We got Bo hanging out. He's rooting for the underdog, he says. Um, Mayank Rana's in the chat. How's it going, Mayank? How's... Scott Smith. Let us know where you guys are watching from and tuning in from. Share and like the stream. We only got two matches today, so it's going to be a quick in and out right before the Super Bowl starts today. Um Bo, I am not in town. I'm still in Virginia. I'm just doing this remotely. And uh, things so far are going smoothly. Hopefully things uh, go well today as well. All right, so what's he got on this purple five here? Banging it to the corner, maybe? Or playing it safe? Again, pushing, yeah, up, pushing yeah, the five but, to the bottom rail. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, oh, so it was kind of a two-way there. Bank, and if you miss, bank it short on the pro side, right? Bring it back a little bit, but uh, he didn't really have a whole lot to, you know, there's nowhere to really hide the cue ball there or anything, so. Yeah, it's pretty naked uh, type safety. It's good to there's miss on the reward. pro side. If he would have made it, there was a good reward there because he was on the six. Oh, for sure. I think that that only goes badly if, if he overbanks it. So if he, if he goes long on the bank, he's going to sell out a shot. But if he misses it short or makes it, all, all is good. Oh, yeah, Mike, I'm in Virginia. Let me know. I think uh, it's not too far of a drive up to Maryland. Let me know if there's any snooker tables up there. I remember you came down, made up, made the trip all the way out here, or all the way out to Seattle for the, I think, Seattle Snooker Open last year or two years ago, if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah, let me know. Yeah, I miss you too, Bo. We'll, we'll be back soon. I think I'm planning to come back early April for a couple of days before Lincoln City uh, 8 ball, so it should be fun. Nice. We'll be good to see you here. Yeah, we've got uh, just I think just teams we signed up for. And that was it. Oh, Shu Chang gets on the rail here. So that makes this six ball a bit of a tester. Watch his fundamentals here, and I tell you that that's really what's impressed me so much about Shu Chang is his discipline to the fundamentals of the game. You know, he really does a great job of staying down on his shot, following through, pre-shot routine, all of it. Yeah, I think the main, the biggest skill that I feel like Xu Ching excels at that I've noticed is uh, his attention to committing to the shot. There, there's times I play with him a lot, and there's times where we play kind of just for fun and more casually. And you notice, I think, it kind of scales with the number of practice strokes he takes. So if he get, just gets down the shot, takes one or two practice strokes, and he's just messing around, the quality of shot is nowhere near the level it is when he takes his, you know, 10 or so practice strokes. Like, look at this shot. He gets up again, right? He's getting up again. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Going to get back down. Yeah. So he's he's a master of getting comfortable on the shot. I think that's his biggest strength by far. Yeah. It really he's, helps him. He's okay with aborting if he's not comfortable and yeah. resetting. You know, a lot of players, they don't reset. You know, they just, they still go with it. And it's also a difference uh, between this and slow play, you could say, right? Because... There's players who just play slow because they're walking around the table multiple times. They're looking at it. 
when a player gets down and like puts their cue on the table almost and puts their other arm on the table and just sits there and stares at the balls for 30 seconds, then that's something I probably would call slow play. But he's focused, he's engaged, he's trying to just get comfortable. So I, I wouldn't no, nowhere near call this slow, even though he might take a long time yeah, on every shot, you know? I wouldn't either. It's definitely, it's diligent play. Yeah. Uh, you know. And he takes rack one. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Takes the lead. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Mistake from Clay. Brings Xu Cheng one up. Every time I see Xu Cheng's Fargo, it's higher. Every single time I look at it. It's yeah, high. I actually just looked it up. You said 637 or something, and I was like, a wait a second. Was, and then yeah. I yeah, just did a search. But yeah, what was it? Sorry, a week ago? I think so. I mean, maybe a week or two ago. It was like yeah. 636 or 637, and now he's at 640. Yeah, it, it, I, I, like I've never seen it go down. <laughs> it's, every time I look, it's it's going higher. And that means he's playing good, good quality pool. Yeah, it's it's uh it's good. It's making improvements. That's all we can strive for. Scott what? Sir, you're welcome for the stream. Uh I appreciate the humility of the commentators and not using a commentator cam taking up screen space. We won't mention any other commentators who do that. But it's it's uh you know, it's a pick your poisons. I think some people like the face cam, get to see who the who's they're interacting with. Yeah. I don't, I don't see a downside necessarily. That, some streamers that do that. I've never done that. You know, I'm yeah, I don't necessarily see a problem with it, though. I think it's kind of uh, the type of content you prefer. Some people like to see and see the emotion and interact more with the face on the screen, someone who they're talking to, you know? And some people just like to hear the voice of God in the rafters just coming down uh, from nowhere, you know? So. Do you have a sound effect for the the voice of God? Can like <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. I think the closest thing I have right now is just uh, well, a little bit one of those, but that's about it. We'll we'll get a soundboard soon. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so uh, Clay is eyeing up this one. Is it the uh, one ten? I believe it's, right. It's one ten, and there's no early tens, right? Is it continuation? Correct. Yeah, you don't win the rack from making a ten early, so a little bit less incentive to go for some of those combos. And I don't think this one's dead. If it were dead, he probably would have already think about shooting it. Yeah, he would have already shot it. I, I think, think he's got to throw it a bit. And it's either that he's going to play the 10 ball or he's going to find a safe. You know, there's really yeah. no other shot on the one here that I can see. He could if he wanted to. Uh, maybe not. If if he thinks of a real creative safety, um, he might push out. But I doubt it. I don't think he wants to give Xu Qing any, any look at this ball. There's not really a lot you can do. So I, I totally agree. I think they're, they're kind of lined up to what, like, the right part of the pocket point, maybe the half diamond from to the right of the table. Yeah, that's where it hit or so on the 10. So he's just yeah. playing cue ball here. I think so too. Yeah, obviously you see, you didn't want to make the two ball or make the one ball from there, but yeah, I think the, and on the converse, you know, we're talking about Xu uh, Chang's, you know, committing to his shot and, and, and being super focused on everything. Um, the, uh, the strength that I like to call out from Clay, and we saw it a few times yesterday, is his attention to speed control on on thinning a ball and playing safety. I don't know, but I think out of all the players I've seen offensively, obviously players have really good speed control pace. But when it comes to defense, just you know, you don't you you got out of, out of line, you don't have anything to look at the table. You just got to thin off this ball and play behind this ball that's left on the table, right? He played a couple shots yesterday, for example. Eight ball on the table, ten ball's the only thing to hide behind. And he just thins off the ball and gets two rails perfect behind the ten. Like yeah. I don't know how, but it's just I think it's, it's just cool. a yeah, super yeah. attention, a lot of practice on, on table speeds. I don't know. Great skill to have for sure. And a Xu Chang with a great starter on the one ball, but oh dogs the two ball. Unfortunate because I really liked his odds here of this rack. Everything was looking pretty in place three to the four to the purple five you know it was kind of all laid out there after he made that one i thought gosh he's he's got a good chance of running it out but i didn't say that because i just certainly don't want to commentate or curse anybody but <laughs> i don't believe in that no such thing <laughs> oh we had fun with it last night you know it was the first time that commentating that i was actually able to be biased towards a specific uh, player because yeah normally right 
we had one one person from one team commentating and the other person and another person from another team commentating. Oh, so perfect. Yeah. Then that's you, equal you, footing, you, right? Yes. Yeah, so you had fair, you know, so I was able to commentate or curse the other team several times and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was so funny because my teammates were behind me high-fiving me. You know. <laughs> Just high-fiving the commentator doing literally nothing at yeah, the table. <laughs> win the game from the booth, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You don't. You can't miss from the booth, but you can definitely make others miss. I guess. Apparently. <laughs> just, just don't tell them. Uh, okay, what do we have here? He's getting kind of close to his work on this four, and, and the five blocks the pocket here. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see another one of these thin safeties where he just rolls a ball to a little tiny spot on the table. That's perfect. Well, the, I think uh, coming off the side of the four, he could get the cue ball over there towards the 10, mm -hmm. moving the four behind the five to the rail. He could I also try to use the five ball as well, right? Push the four to the bottom rail and use the cue ball off of the right long rail. It looks like he's eyeing up the combo at what that would look like. I don't mind the combo. I think Clay's pretty strong on his combinations from what I've seen um, at these mid-range combos as well. Yeah, I'm not playing that, but that's me. I, I'm very not confident the the success rate of this shot and the outcome if you miss is yeah, you gotta... probably pretty disastrous. Yeah, so he is going to looks like you got to know yourself, right? You got to if this is a seven out of ten shot for you, I think you take it. He's going to bring the four to. Oh, he is taking the combo. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> incredible shot. Yeah, I think another one of Clay's skills. Pretty all-around strong player, but I think I've noticed his mid-range kind of slow hit combos are really good. Oh, that's a great skill to have for, you know, rotation pool because, mm -hmm. you know, that can win you a lot of games. You got Scott Stir over on YouTube asking, you mentioned you're streaming remote. What's your main YouTube channel? I don't have a main YouTube channel as of now. Maybe we'll make one in the future. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, this is uh, mostly where I stream off of Ox, Ox Billiards. We got Snooker and uh pool tournaments are you doing any other streaming out there in virginia Christian? um not as of late but i start i did start talking to some of the tournament directors in the area there's a couple of you know amateur tours that run here one of them is called steel blue tournaments um they actually had a tournament uh, yesterday and today so i had a conflict so i couldn't join but um i'm tempted to i've already talked to them a bit and you know trying to set up one camera maybe for them to to kind of give them a taste of what uh, what is possible and uh, see if we can help them out and get some couple angles because they, they kind of, you know, they got a good setup, but I think they've just got 30 frames per second, you know, 720p webcam, nothing too fancy. Um, but I do know they want to make it, you know, higher quality for, for the live stream. And, you know, the guys over there are pretty pretty solid on what they, what they have going right now. So I think we could just, you know, improve and add to what they have and it'll hopefully make things better. Um, nice. and yeah, there's one other guy at Q Master Billiards. I think he does this channel called Viper Billiards. Um, oh, yeah. haven't yeah, really yeah. talked to him yet much about things, but uh, yeah, maybe in the future, you know, get get a couple more folks over here involved and you know, just uh, improve the quality of sport, Q Sports all around, you know. Heck of a try on that eight ball to cut that in. That was a very difficult cut shot on the eight that he ended up leaving from. His is a uh, little bit of a missed position on the seven cost him to the position on the eight, uh, but he almost came back and pocketed that ball. Yeah, the way he that, played it, he was going four rails. I think so. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think he just didn't put enough outside English on it to get it to come back around. And it ended up at the bottom of the table. So Xu Chang might be looking to try to pocket the eight and bump the nine in the same shot because I like that. Yeah, that's the only way I think he's going to get shape on the nine afterwards. I remember making this mistake actually during Lincoln City playing uh, doubles nine ball, same kind of shot playing nine ball. So the nine ball is where it is now, and you'd think as long as you bump it anywhere on a bar box, it's gonna go to a pocket ish yeah. somewhere you can make, you know. Yeah. And me be, being trying to be pristine, I'm trying to do the four rail position on a bar box, which is kind of what he tried to do there. But I'm just, you know, what can really go wrong when you bump the the, the nine ball up table and your cue ball somewhere at the bottom of the table? Really, not much, because you're gonna yeah. get a shot at least for your teammate too. Like, you know, as long as you're confident with your shooting, it's not gonna be too crazy. It's a lot harder to get this four rail position because you gotta be so precise. 
Yeah, it's it's like uh, the worst thing that could happen is it bumps and goes to a rail, you know. Yeah, but you still you have a tough shot and you're still at the table. You know, you could still scrounge right. out of it. Yeah. Well, here we go with a big time inside English four rail position on the ten. You don't like the outside and draw it well, out. Actually, now that I see the angle, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the change in the angle. That helps a little bit. It. I think both are there, but yeah, uh, the outside's going to help you get more speed on the ball. I think the inside one you got to power it with more speed because you have more distance to travel. The outside one you can just hit it with a better stroke and manipulate yeah, it like there, that. There it is. Yeah, he didn't really have to kill it. Great shot there. I mean, couldn't have gotten any better on this 10 ball. Yeah, nicely done. Ties it up 1-1. One, one. Clay Belvoir showing why he is in this spot. Third place match in this open event. How many entrants did you have total in this tournament? Uh, I think we had a lot of people drop. I think the entry was up to 40-something originally, but it dropped down to, I think, 18 uh, on the last day because I think... Uh, a lot of folks had to cancel, and I th because it might have been Super Bowl conflicting, I think folks uh, decided yeah. not to go. And just from the sheer dropping of numbers of the tournament, it ended up being almost a one-day event anyway. Uh, but had more people joined, it probably would have ran longer today. So I think it was a decent trade-off so that uh, folks that who did play in it didn't really end up uh, conflicting with uh, later plans if they had any. Right. Yeah, oh, 34. A okay. tournament on Super Bowl weekend. It's always a, yeah, a challenge. Was, you, you guys ran ran a lot of the most of the bracket yesterday, so that there's really only two matches today: the third place and the finals. And is this a, a double dip scenario for whoever wins this match? Will they have to double dip? Uh, uh, Fallen. I think Secret said it's going to be a race to nine, extended race to nine. Oh, okay, good. I mean, mm. not good, but. Yeah. Some people prefer that and some people don't. You know, they say uh, in the single race finals, instead of a double dip, that the uh, the runner-up has the advantage, right? Because there are... Oh, what a break from Xu Chang. Look at this. Yeah, four he ball goes into either three pocket. Balls on the, three balls on the break, and he's dead perfect on the one, and the two's sitting right there. I mean, golden yeah, I opportunity here. I don't think you asked for anything more than this. This is like a... Perfect layout, but can he capitalize? Yeah. Yeah, going back to what you said, I think uh, I do agree with the yeah the the underdog has the advantage on a single race scenario because they've been more frequently at the table for some you know those reasons, and then also they've got one less life, so the the other person has more to lose um, because they haven't lost as much in a sense, right? Yeah, I, it's. You don't I, to... I, I do think you know certainly if you've got to double dip somebody that they've got a huge advantage. But if, but in theory, it's kind of the same advantage everybody else had, assuming everyone was double elimination, right? Yeah. So you kind of earned the advantage from playing well in the tournament mm -hmm. all along, and then, then you he... get to the final and you don't get as big of a reward. I guess um, so I can see. You that. think that? Do you think that Xu Cheng? forgot that the four ball was pink because he the way he played that it looked like he was setting up on the purple mm, i don't or do you think, think just so under, under hit this ball because yeah i he, think i think the main thing was he actually shot that left-handed right so i think his left-handed stroke he just under under hit it oh that was very observant i'm pretty sure i did i did not notice that let me just take a quick look hopefully my internet is stable. He's got to be precise on this. Yeah, yeah, he shot it left-handed because you had to stretch out over the table or use the, the bridge otherwise. Okay. So. Very observant. Nice shot on the floor ball. Excellent. Yeah, well done. And he can cheat this pocket, so he can kind of do whatever he wants. He can cheat it either, probably cheat it and go into the rail, I'd assume. So he's got really any position he wants on the nine ball. Yeah, he could choose to go into the rail or draw, and it looks like he's going to draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mentioned the game we were playing yesterday. I think we, we played, last time I was in Seattle, a, a little doubles versus one. I think we were playing Arnie. And uh, me and Xu Cheng had to alternate um, shots, but one of us was offhanded. Um, every other rack, we'd switch who was offhanded, and then every third rack, we'd both be offhanded. And I think we took it to Hill Hill. So it shows you Xu Cheng can shoot with his uh, offhand pretty well. That's really good. I don't think I would do very well in that scenario, but... Um something that it's good to practice especially if you're playing on nine footers a lot it's nice to have that skill to be able to use your offhand definitely um you know i certainly could have used it last night i had a situation where the eight ball was in the spot where i couldn't use the bridge because the cue ball was on the rail and the eight ball was off the rail a little bit and it was too far for me to reach right handed oh if i could shot left handed it would have been a simple shot but oh, I, I wasn't see. and i tried to use my extension you know on my cue and i ended up missing the shot but left-handed it would have been simple or even behind the back mm -hmm. you know daniel Celio style behind the back move i probably would have performed better uh, but yeah I, I you know, it's, it's it makes me think it's like uh, i really need to develop that part of my game it's really not that hard to develop it i would say if you're if you're just trying it out really i think the best advice i heard about it is just play 10 minutes a day every time you practice just shoot like two or three racks with just that handedness and get to the point where you learn something about yourself. You know, like get to the point where, right. where you get to like, okay, that was a good stroke or that was a good shot. And, you know, it does a lot of things, I think, when you shoot offhanded. It fo makes you focus back on those fundamentals that maybe you overlook day to day or shot to shot when you're shooting normally. Um, and then you'll find that sometimes when you go back to your normal handedness, uh, you'll actually kind of be refreshed in a way. And, and actually shoot better afterwards as a result. So dry break from Clay here. Chu Cheng going to try to break out the two? Is, it, is that what he's looking for here? Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, wow. wow. Unlucky. Yeah, kind of. I mean, if he comes full into that six, he's going to be really good on the two. Um, but if oh, we can get man. a side view here, maybe see how thin this cut is. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty thin. I is the bank think, on? No, I think I like just playing. The bank is on, yeah. You could play the two-way again, but I might like playing the safe just because where the eight is. Use the eight as a stopper for the two ball. Yeah, or tuck it underneath it even. He went oh, for the shot. all out. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Yeah, the bank was there. I think both are pretty high percentage, so you kind of just pick, uh, pick which one is your preference. Obviously, playing Clay, he probably doesn't want to let him back to the table, so he wants to be more aggressive than not i would assume i i would agree with that um because you can play a good safety and then you can get a good kick and safe resafe you back you know mm -hmm. if you can avoid turning the table over to him you do it keep him off the table that's the best way to beat a good player is to not let him play Gone once again a little too far. It's kind of been the story of this tournament. Overran positions. I think uh, a lot of the players adapting to the speed of the tables. They're playing pretty quick. Yeah, I, I noticed that at Ox as well. I think it's just the HVAC in there it keeps it nice and dry. You're right. The mm -hmm. air is dry. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, most of us at home, we have quite a bit of humidity in our areas where we play pool at, at home a lot of times, and that. Causes a little bit of sluggishness. This yeah. is what this is what it should be like, right? You know, when yeah. you're going to an event in Vegas or whatever, this they're probably going to play similar to this. Yeah, and another theory I have too is that I think uh, because they get so much play compared to a home table, you know, there's so many people rotating in and out and so many balls rolling on the table and getting brushed and getting cleaned and vacuumed every day. Um, I think any sort of fibers on the table that develop, they kind of get, uh, you know, broken in and, and, and worn down onto the cloth. So it becomes more slippery over time and becomes a smoother surface. Um, yeah, I think you're right. So I there. think the combination of those things oh, definitely makes really it. Tried, uh -oh. Really tried hard to slow roll that down the rail. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. I, I understand why he slow rolled it because that line was going to run into the six kind of no matter what. But I almost yeah. wonder just committing to taking the shot and you know bumping the six in a way you wanted to or or hitting the same shot just at pace and coming two rails maybe around the seven or some, something else that lets him let out his stroke i think that's kind of the the moral of the story that i've seen 
Slow rolling can be death on these tables sometimes and overrunning position. So trying to do a shot where you can let out the stroke and get a big margin of error for coming into the line of the position, I think are the, the two keys to success. So seven's gonna be a tricky ball to get on. Gonna have to play some short side on it. It's got a few options. I almost, if the line is there, I almost like going forward two rails and playing the gap between the seven and nine, shooting the seven into the bottom left corner. Oh, that's a tough gap. I, I, I would look for the seven up table and just play short side on it. It's yeah. an easy shot. It's an easy shot for Clay if you can get to that position. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward too. I just think that if uh, a combo on the ten, if he wants it, and continuation, right? If he can slow roll this and leave the seven right where the ten is, yeah, it's not a bad play. Do you do you think that pocket's just as big as playing it up into the corner, or do you think the corner is just a, a harder shot? It's hard to it's hard to tell. It looks like the ten goes to the side pretty easily where it is. It could bump it a little funny. He is looking at that. Yeah, if he makes a 10, the, the 7 should settle nicely for the, the corner or the side. I think so, too. Yeah, he's calling the 10, it looks like. Yeah, I, I like this shot because um, you, you can slow roll it and leave the 7 in a very manageable pl place for your to continue the run out. Oh, sorry. It's trying to get a little bit different angle on this. Oh, I just played the... Ball up table, playing behind the nine. Wow, oh, nice shot. And the cue ball behind the nine. Okay. I shouldn't have zoomed in. We missed the uh, the cue ball position, but nice yeah, speed well, there. That was a heck of a safety. I wasn't even looking at that. And that's you know the the hundred point Fargo difference. You know I don't see shots like that. Um, I didn't even consider that. I was looking all at the uh, combo on the ten as the best option. Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of a, a big determining factor at the higher levels. Do you know when to play safe? When you're, when you got to take your medicine and throw in the towel and live to fight another day. And a safety like this is a game winner usually. Yeah, it's, I mean it's even better than him making the ball sometimes, right? Yeah, I think he this makes is, it. He gets yeah, because he's got now that seven down there by the eight. So the with ball in hand, the run out here is very easy. But uh, Shu Chen can kick very well. There's a high percentage that he's not going to give away ball in hand here. Two rails come right at the seven. Use your parallel shift. Figure out the angle and he hit it. He got the hit. And if you get the hit, funny things can happen. So good shot, Shu Chang. Went three rails into it. I'm not sure if they he was looking at the three rail into it, but either way, he got there. That's all you can really hope for is don't give up ball in hand, right? So again, going back to what we were saying about keeping a good player off the table, you know, the mm -hmm. combo on the 10, making that could have potentially given Clay the run out. And this bank? Oh, wow. You know, you, you can play the best safety on somebody and... You know, they're still coming back to the table. They have a chance to to retaliate. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big swing when you don't get the run out. It's like run out, automatic win versus now you grind the rack. Now you have to think about it. Now you got to waste extra time, extra you know, brain cycles thinking about this, letting your opponent get some more hits on the table. It's a pretty big difference when it comes to momentum. Yeah. Is he thinking about trying to thin cut this seven into the side? I think it might be possible i mean if it hits the point just right maybe i think if nothing was in the way you'd kick it down you know down and back because it's an easy kick shot into the side but oof good camera view there that is a rough cut from where he is it's got to be paper thin yeah but i think even he can even hit the point and go in at that angle so yeah he hit the point too thick it's got to be, like you said, paper thin, 
Yeah. And then it still has to kind of rub the point and just f- drop in the pocket right where the curvature is at its peak, you know? Yeah, it was it was really tough. Yeah. But he didn't really have any other way to get to it other than to go two rails. Yeah, and that, that's super hard to gauge if you don't if you don't know that line or practice yeah. it. Most players don't. I definitely don't. Wouldn't be comfortable shooting that way. But now an open table. Yep. Clay got his reward that he wanted. I think it's uh, definitely in the cards for shooting to steal this match away, though, just based on uh, how the the rack's been going. Has it been clean play? Even this shot from Clay, he would have liked to be either straight in or on the other side of the ball. On the other side of it, yeah. If he's on the other, on this side, he wants a lot of angle. He's gonna have to swing the ball around the rails. He's gonna go outside here, swing yeah. two rails around, play the ten in the same pocket. Yeah, pretty standard see, shot for Clay. You can see the spin zip off that second rail. It kind of just launched afterwards and sent it straight up table nicely. I saw him move Shu Chang's quarter. <laughs> he's gonna put it back afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just not that it's in the way, but it's just something your eye might, you know, kind of drift to. So, yeah, good shot. Yep, nicely played from Clay to tie the score, two two, and he did put Shu Chang's quarter back. <laughs> So let me see. I got the bracket pulled up, but the problem is the font's a little small. So hopefully, you, with the folks with the small screens or big screens, can see it still. Uh, maybe I'll fiddle with it. But uh, this is was the tournament that both players went through to get here. Stephen Fullen is in the hot seat, waiting for the winner of this one. He's in the room, hanging out. Don't know if he's warming yeah, up yet or not. But uh, we had a couple of local monsters that didn't make it to this this far, which is I think I would. Mean, a little bit of a surprise, Daniel Sardocilio and James DeVee. Uh, can you tell me who, who had uh, defeated those two? Because uh, I can't read the bracket from there. Yeah, James ended up, I believe, uh, canceling, not not, not joining oh, the tournament. He, yeah, oh, he so he, he didn't play at all, so he just uh, wasn't even um, in the tournament. And Daniel, I think, ended up losing... Um, Won his first match, he lost 7-0 to um, Stephen Follin, and it was one of those kind of swingy matches where, um, like, the kind of one or two mistakes are as impactful as they can be, and kind of swing, you know, the racks in, in your favor, yeah. and then you break and run on your turn, and then it's kind of like a like a shutout. But it's really only a few mistakes he made, I guess. Then he played yeah. a few matches on the B side, and then he ends up, I think, losing to Dan Louis seven to four on the B okay. side to get eliminated. So. Not oh, easy, not easy opponents for Daniel, that's for sure. Yeah, no no shame in losing to Stephen Fullen and, and Dan Louie, two great players. The 7-0 surprised me. I did see that now that I, you reminded me. I did see that on the um, on the bracket yesterday when I was just looking when I had breaks. And I saw the 7-0 and I figured, well, it's it probably was, like you said, one of those... Sometimes you just don't get a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Especially, you know, alternate break format. Um, you know, you get, uh, if you don't achieve what you need on your breaks, it can uh, it can get out of hand quickly. It's kind of like those two-point swings in a way, right? You, you make a mistake, now you're down by two, not really down by one. Um, so it gets out of yeah. hand a, a little bit different way than uh, right. winter break yeah. format does. For sure, for sure. It's always painful when you like you dry break and you lose two racks because of it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dry break. Yeah, dry break. They run out and then they break and run. That's yep. that's about as worst case scenario. Right. In alternate break, yeah, dry break can cost you two racks, and that's painful because when you get back to the table, you're just it's it's hard to get back in that mode. So what is Xu Cheng uh, doing here with this two ball? 
I think it's it clay. Oh, oh, is that clay? Okay, sorry. That was a nice shot. I didn't know that it had room. Hit it like it was a hanger. All right, sorry, I'm just messing with the bracket, trying to make it better, but all I can do is make it a little bit bigger. This is really tough. Tree topped over the four, banking the three ball. Yeah, he kind of went, he went for that. Yeah, I wouldn't even say it wasn't really a two-way because he didn't bank it short like you would think in a, in a two-way shot. Uh, but I thought, you know, he was probably thinking there is a possibility that he's going to get that cue ball behind the four and seven. So you play the shot in a couple different ways. You can try to come underneath the four and bump it, or you can just try to play high with it at some inside. It's a little tricky because of how steep the angle is. It's going to be hard to hold the speed, so I assume he's going to be slow, slow rolling it if he's trying to hold it. It's going to bump it, yep. Nice. Oh, and it went Almost. too far. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like that similar cut that he had before, but this is even worse. There's there's really no way to cut this ball in. Yeah. So now you're looking to play safe. Can yeah. You, can he hit it full enough and draw off of it to get behind the the purple five and the, and the ten ball down by the spot? Yeah, but where does do you think the six is going to hold the the three the four in place? No, I'm thinking hit it the other way, kind of cross bank it. Oh, I see. He's going to okay. go and hit the six. Oh, I don't know if he's playing the combination or if he's just trying to play the four off of the six. In that case, big risk of a scratch there. Didn't. Uh, Pool of Champions wants to know what the entry fee was. Uh, entry fee? I don't exactly remember. Uh, it was on the post, but I think Secret Wong is in the chat over on Facebook. She can. Let us know, and we'll we'll shout it out. Don't remember. I think it was somewhere in the hundred dollar range. If I, if I had to guess. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was something like one fifty or somewhere around there. Yeah, it being an open tournament, I think they generally have a higher entry fee just because uh, it can be a collection of a bigger pot, also bigger bigger names, big dogs can you come out and play. Yeah, you kind of have to have a higher entry fee to get the the pot up higher because you don't typically have as many players as you would have in, you know, yep. a cap event like a six hundred and under. You're going to get you know, sixty four players. You know, it's yeah. So it's, uh, it's always a trade off, right? There's just you know, I mean, and I understand. There's just not a, a lot of players that. You know, if you're a you know if you're a four seventy or something coming into this, you you are really kind of dead money, right? You're not, you don't really have a chance. You're just doing it to donate and get the experience, right? But there's just yeah. not a lot of people who can afford to do that. So I totally understand that. Yeah, I think that that type of, I guess, culture to the way we play pool, though, I feel like needs to change if we're really gonna improve as a whole. You know, I think we need to either fix that problem which you're talking about, which is a uh, give it a lower barrier to entry to lower players by either having like tiered payouts or whatnot. Or I think ultimately like we talked about sponsorships yesterday. I think having more sponsorships, more money in pool is going to be the easiest fix because then it's not, it's not, uh, it's not an obstacle really. The entry fee or shouldn't be an obstacle. If you can compete at the level, then you kind of can get to the stage that you're at. And that way the only thing you kind of like remove, remove all the blockers and the only thing up left is for you to try to compete against good players that's all that's left i'm sure a lot more people would be interested and we get a lot more uh more players but yeah it's a it's a trade-off right it's a yeah it's a challenge to balance it um to where okay what was i uh, was what was his plan there coming around like that i wonder if he was trying to bump into the nine yeah i think so <clears throat> because he's now he's kind of stuck with this purple five in a bad spot. Doesn't play to really any pocket other than up table. It's one of those shots where you have to uh, 
focus on the stroke more than the speed because he got a lot of tangent line action and it kind of arced a lot and that definitely widened open the angle off of the first the first rail do you see an easy safety here I was, i'm not seeing any i'm not seeing um oh, he's I'm, pulling the 10 ball on the side oh he's pulling the 10 okay i'm liking the cross bank if he can cross the five to the left long rail and play the cue ball two rails up table to the top diamond and get the five to come behind these balls no he was trying to get behind the six yeah that was a fancy safety attempt yeah you try to push the five off the 10 to the left rail maybe behind the nine and play the cue ball behind the six off yeah the one rail that's aggressive call the 10 just in case you you know don't yeah. bury the ball and the 10 exit you know accidentally goes in the side it's not what he was really wanting to do that was another thing we talked about yesterday was um you should always call the something on your safety shots in 10 ball specifically right I think it's a, it's a misnomer. It's always a mistake, in my opinion, to uh, call safety ever when you're playing yeah. 10 ball or 9 ball. doesn't ever make sense. Uh, There's no reason to call safety because if you pocket a ball, your opponent has the option to give it back to you. So. Exactly. And you only it's only a disadvantage if you don't call safe, like, right? If you call, sorry, if you, if you call safe, it's a disadvantage yeah. because you're not calling a shot. Let's say you call the most random crazy shot you can think of that could happen and then it does happen. Now you just take that decision away from your opponent and they don't have a choice in the matter. You could actually end up on the positive side. And if you hook yep. yourself, you're going to be there anyway because your opponent's not going to, you know, they're going to just going to put you back if you wouldn't have uh, called the shot. So you're better off always calling it, I think. Yep, I agree. Yeah, Secret saying he tried to play the 10 in the side, was also trying to get behind the six. I guess he talked about it in the room, so. She's able to hear that. Grant Coover asking, do all tables use that set of balls or did someone bring for today's game? Uh, here at Ox, we have the Aramith black set that you see on every table and every single table is pretty much identical. They're all nine foot Rasson Ox tables. Ox being the, the, you know, the Rasson model that they make. This is the same table you'll see in the Moscone Cup. Obviously, they've switched to four-inch pockets now. We've got, I think, the four-and-a-half-inch uh, pocket version. And um, the Aramith Black set is what they also use in the Moscone Cup. So that's uh, why we got it. It shows up nicely on TV. I know there's a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, controversy over the Purple 5 and the Pink 4. Um, yes, we won't get that started in yeah, the chat. Yeah, that, that, that's always a discussion that uh, you, you derails, you but... You know, you put a poll up in the chat. How many people like a purple five ball? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I'm just kidding. I care zero about all those opinions. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> oh, look at this. He overcut late. it. Yeah, with a late game miss, and this is what swings games in ten ball is the late game errors. Yeah, definitely. Wow, that's a huge miss, and that's the biggest way to miss on these tables. They're pretty accepting the pockets generally when they're at a slower pace. And when you um, when you catch that near jaw though at a higher speed, on these rassons they very very often will rattle. Some something about how the pocket is shaped. I know we talked in the past. Remember we had a discussion, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've caved that these are four inch, four and a half inch pockets, not four and a quarter. Um, after doing some measuring and and uh, right. checking of stuff, um, and definitely the just the the biggest difference. Um, is the sort of cut of the pocket and how the cushions react to the ball hitting it, you know? Uh, yes. I think on the Rassons, the cushions are angled downwards a little bit more. Um, so it kind of squeezes or pinches the ball underneath the rail in a way. Uh, that's kind of different from like a blue label diamond table that's kind of more flat against the ball and doesn't squeeze the ball really. So you get a lot of difference uh, in, in cue ball reaction. It'll play a lot shorter. It'll sometimes feel like it's playing faster if it's bouncing more off the rail. Uh, a few different things will, will change. So Xu Cheng gets the lead here, 3-2, to two, on a late-game error from Clay. Clay playing really well, but those one mistakes cost you one, one rack, usually, when it's late in the game, and especially at this level of the tournament. But yeah, I agree with you on the... The tables, just little minor differences make them play a little different. Um, so just being used to the equipment is, is helpful. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like Clay looking at well, looking at the rack from the side, making sure that the one ball is lined up on the spot correctly. And I would venture to guess that Xu Cheng has quite a few more racks on these tables than Clay does. Uh, yeah, I think Xu Cheng plays a weekly APA Masters League on this uh, here at Ox, so he's definitely used to all these tables. Uh, yeah, he's been well. a regular at Ox for a while. So. Clay has come by a lot. I think uh, he first Clay started coming down first when he was on Team Washington a couple years ago, and we hosted it for the first time, the Northwest Cup uh, here right. at Ox. And I think uh, he came down, you know, the 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 months and weeks leading up to it to practice on the match table and get used to the conditions and uh, and all that. So he definitely has some some feel for these tables. But yeah, week to week, day to day, Xu Cheng's got the advantage there for sure. Well, this is kind of a funny rack here. Mm, Jonathan Herring saying that the only issue with the black set is the 10 ball. Hard to tell which is the 8 and which is the 10. So, Sometimes uh, it's positioned the right way because this it doesn't yep. have the white on the ball. Um, but, you know, that being said, um, with the other set, it's kind of hard to tell between the 1 ball and the 9 ball a lot of times. You know, so <laughs> you take the good and the bad with it. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I obviously have a different opinion when it comes to the ball set than maybe a lot of players. Two rail. But, uh, two he, rail did not or... call that, you know, he did not call that two rail, so Xu Chang with the option here. Yeah, he's definitely going to stay at the table in this. This is a shot I saw from Dan Louis yesterday. He kind of he was hitting it the other way, but he was thinning off the two and pushing the wedging the two between the rail and, and the other object ball. I don't think he really has the angle to do this. Um, he won't be able to wedge it. He'll maybe be able to push it and bump the 10 farther away, but as long as he gets a good cue ball, he should get behind the 5. Yeah, that's the way. He wants to get the cue ball behind the 5. Because that way he doesn't have to try to hold the cue ball. And you know the 10's going to move here, so focus on getting the cue ball behind the purple 5. And Oh, oh, oh he was to freeze him. Cool. Yeah, okay, that's nicely played, I think. Definitely makes it very uncomfortable for Clay, even if he can see a piece of the two. It's very uncomfortable here. Oh. Yeah, that ball is frozen, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, it might might have an edge actually. Yeah, I think, I think he's got I think he's got a little edge here. So I think Clay's gonna try to bring this cue ball back behind the five. Yeah, good hit. That's a good hit. Oh, very nicely done. It's all right, secret. We 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 can spot it for you. It's uh was pretty clear from that perspective. Clay didn't get in our way. <laughs> so ultimately, this is the scenario you're you're looking for when playing the safety is trying to wedge that ball up against the rail and get some separation. Having had Xu Cheng not bumped the ten ball with the cue ball on the way out in the last shot, he would have gotten closer to freezing it. And really, if he freezes it and doesn't give him a shot, it's just as, like as effective, right? I was okay with bumping the 10, knowing that it's probably going to bump the 10 and use and know that the place to be with the cue ball is behind the 5. Yeah. Because yeah. it wouldn't have been as lockup as what he was trying to do. Um, certainly, he almost got him completely jammed on the 10. Yeah. Um, but the way it worked out, it gave him that edge. It would have been game. It would have been this scenario, basically, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a bad hit, pretty sure. I don't know. They're gonna. They're discussing it. All right, we'll take a little quick little replay here. Yeah, let's let's see if this was is very very close. But the two is in front of the ten. So if the two moves first, I think it was a bad hit. That's my opinion, anyway. Obviously not official, uh, but. What's your? Yeah, I think it is a bad hit. Let me see if I can get the frame exactly. Yeah, it's super close. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it's a bad hit. Um, just the way he said the the two nudges uh, the edge of the rail and 
doesn't really move forward much. It kind of moves almost backward. Uh, yeah, I it's think the they just could... agreed with you and me that it was indeed a foul. Couldn't have been much closer. <clears throat> yeah, he's got to do slow-mo next. That's, that's pretty easy to do. We'll figure it out. I think with 60 frames uh, per second, it should be plenty of frames to be able to tell when uh, when you do slow-mo. Mm, yeah, I can just change it manually. Okay. All right, well, pretty crucial mistake there because that probably would have left a weird spot for Clay, but now he's got ball in hand. He made a little bit of a positional mistake on the five, but I think he's back in line now. Very much so. Just wants to play center of the table. I think straight or either side is good based on where the eight ball is. Worst case, he shoots it in the side. Or most likely he shoots it in the side, I would guess. Yeah, this is a stop shot. Get yourself the eight in the side. You know, just kind of stun over for the nine. That's I like uh, I like drawing it a tiny bit. Always oh, playing it this way. So here I almost take it in the corner just to kind of stun over. You have a bigger pocket for the corner, certainly. You can play top. Um, you could also come around the nine or just draw it back. The side is just fine for him. Yeah, it was a little straighter than than, uh, than I thought. I'm going to take this two rails. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Back and forth. Don't try to hold it. Biggest mistake you can do on the speed of your tables is try to hold it. Yeah, and let the stroke out and play a line that will get you more margin of error. It's much easier to pocket the ball when you get your stroke into it versus trying to dink it in there. So back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, that's a good battle. We are in a race to four now. I think it's going to be close this match just because of, I think mistakes kind of are on both sides, but they're they're also playing well uh, when they get certain opportunities. So I imagine it's going to be at least seven five at the at the end of it, if I had to guess. You know, Xu Chang's been playing in a lot of these open events, and he seems to go deep, um, but he hasn't quite snapped one off that I've seen. No, uh, yeah, he's always just a little short, right? Yeah, you know, he's finishing those third and fourth and second and, you know, like those, he, he's getting in the money almost every time. And uh, I think he feels like he's he's due. But again, big uphill battle facing two extremely talented players to get to that spot. I think already he's achieved tons in this tournament though beating dan louis last night yes of... but I, yes I, I i would say no matter what happens he, he's you know definitely uh had a successful tournament no matter what happens mm -hmm. in the next two you know a couple of matches here but he, as a player you know you never want to finish a tournament with a loss mm -hmm. meaning yeah you want to win yeah yeah, yeah. He, he, he. I think so far Clay is gonna is is his next biggest obstacle mentally, probably uh, and physically, I guess as well. But like in terms of players in the area that he's used to playing and stuff, I think the day he starts beating Clay is the day he's gonna jump uh, in his game. Jump into that six fifty ish club. Yeah, probably. Knocking on the door already. Uh, this is a good safety from Xu Ching. But um, I think Clay's got the... You're going to come at this one with two rails? You want to hit that side rail for you know before you get to the one? The side rail does give you a chance to separate the balls a little bit more easily. So you can yeah. 
he went fuller into it hitting it pretty full you're gonna leave stuff chunked up so unless you're using maybe the six to play behind at that speed um, yeah, you're not gonna get a lot of separation on the balls, but if you're trying to just separate them and get distance Yeah, coming two rails and kind of thinning the one and clipping it will send that cue ball to the right side of the table Maybe get behind the, the you know the eight the ten the right. nine something like that And it just creates more separation in general. I feel like that's often the case with a two railer compared to the one railer I don't know why Yeah, so here he's got the challenge of getting from the two to the four ball and the four doesn't play it only banks, really, so we're going to either see a safety or just play for the bank or run into it. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, there's the opportunity with this angle to come into the four or five. Yeah, does, no. the, does the four float to the side? I don't think so. Not from that. I can't imagine from that angle he would be able to play the four on the side. No. No, it's going to be a safety. Uh, yeah. He's just looking at what angle he wants to come off of it. Does he want to go shoot, try to go for the gap between the 8 and the 10? That's a little bit more aggressive, maybe. There's also the gap between the 10 and the 9. He can send the cue ball. Or he could just push the 4 ball forward and try to stun the cue ball over or hold it there and play, uh, play the 9 or the 6 as the blocker. What about the kick and stick? Can Is you... there enough space for the kick and stick? Between the yeah. rail and the four. You know, because you could send that four two rails down to the bottom rail and, and hold the cue ball right there where the four is. I don't know. Only the players really know if that's available to them. It's calling something. Is he going to try to pocket this four? No. He's just calling it, I think, just in case. Like we said, you should always call something when you're playing safe. Oh, no, at he... that speed, he, he couldn't have been trying to pocket the four at that speed. No, no, no. I think he was he was calling the bottom left corner, right? Okay. Or the, the, like so the he bank was shot. To, he was trying to miss that point and yeah, run send, it into the eight ball. Send the four towards the eight or send the four between the nine, ten, maybe, something like that. Yeah. It's a tricky spot. It was very strange, that shot, that situation. Oh, it's going to cruise right past the six. Prime position once again. Yeah, a little uncomfortable. He does have to queue over the nine. Yeah, about a half ball or so hampering him. The way this is lined up, if he just stuns it, he's going to run into the seven, which really is not the end of the world unless he hits... Kind of the top side of the seven from this angle, or the you know the left side of the seven from here, and gets behind it. But if he hits it full, it's almost like a nice, I call it a backboard, like a nice stopper for the cue ball to get a shot on the six. He can also go forward and just go a few rails and get in the six into the corner of the side. But being jacked up with side spin always brings that swerve into effect, so you got to take that into account. It makes the shot a little bit harder. Yeah, he's it's playing it's safe. Not, yeah, I think he did. I think he, he did what you said you're not supposed to do. He said, I'm calling safety. <laughs> I think he said nine ball in the corner? <laughs> or no? no. Oh. oh, okay, no, never mind, never mind. No, he's playing the five. The okay. Five in the corner, yeah. yeah. I, I could hear a little bit of the room audio uh, through one of my yeah, cameras. I don't. I don't. I heard something like something like in the I corner. I can't imagine calling the nine ball in the corner there. <laughs> nah, the unless one. unless you're sending the five for a joyride, there's no way. Right. Good shot there. You know that was a lot more difficult than it it looked because you know when you're queuing over and you're trying to get that position on the six as well, queuing over the nine. Oh, I was worried about his hand hitting the nine. That's what I heard. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks for the clarification. Secret. Now, do we have audio in the room uh, on the stream, or is yeah, it just the, okay. So yeah, the we, viewers, the viewers can hear the audio. Yeah, just some some ambient noise, whatever, whatever hitting of the balls. It's a little bit on the lower end because the I think those microphones are a little bit uh, fuzzy. They kind of buzz in the background. They're mm. not as high quality, but uh, they're just permanently set up there. So. They can't hear the balls hit the back of the pockets, etc. 
Right. When we From move the, the road... side cam, it's a different table, so it's a little bit farther away. Oh, I see. So when we're, just so the viewers know, we are commentating remotely, so we don't actually have the audio in the room here uh, for us. Yeah, we'll hear everything you say secret on, blasted on, on the loud. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll try to figure out how to get the audio from my desktop into the call, maybe something like that. I'm not sure. So here I, we go. This is pivotal here. Yeah, and being close to the rail, you know, he's got to really bear down. I almost would evaluate rolling this forward and just nudging the 10 ball. But I when would, you can stroke it like that. Beautiful. Yeah, when you could stroke it like that when you're jacked up on the ball, that was absolutely perfect. If you can do that. Yeah, I was, I'm with you, Christian. I, I think I'm rolling forward and playing the 10 up table in that situation because... Yeah, this replay just shows it. Bam. I mean, that's that's just a beautiful stun shot on the nine. Pressure shot, too, because at that stage, it's miss and lose, right? You, you know, you don't... You usually don't get another chance when you miss late game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's talking about it in a little bit. I think Chu Cheng yeah. asked the same question. You could have you could have rolled it forward. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, harder nine to get an easier ten. That's really what it was. Still, Still rolling. rolling. Who do you think will win? Uh, you know, if I'm going to put a guess on it. Uh, I'm going to say Clay. Yeah, it's I think at this point in the match, 4-3, where it is now and how they've been playing, I think Clay's going to win it now. But Well, the odds say 78% for Clay, according to the Fargo rate odds. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, But I, I always say, uh, you know, about Fargo rate uh, is... Fargo rate is a determination of how you have played in the past, and it is not a predictor of how you will play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, so you always got to keep that in mind. People get that confused with thinking, oh, well, you should play like this because this is your rating. No, that just means that's how you have played in the past. That's like the stock market. You know, past mm -hmm. performance doesn't indicate future results, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think I also like to read it a little bit differently maybe than most people, but... When you look at the odds uh, calculation, you look at it generally as a percentage uh, based on how they write it, right? And that percentage you're comparing to 100, right? And you're saying 78% chance out of 100 that he's going to win. That's a pretty high percentage, right? But when I like to look at it the other way, I look, to, I look at it in relation to the other percentage on the screen, which is, in this case, it's about 80% to 20%. So really, that's 4 to 1 in terms of odds, right? Yeah. And when you think about it that way... It's actually a little bit closer to center than it might seem. And you definitely could think about, all right, if Clay's got one on the wire in a race to race to four, I'll give you four to one odds that he wins. That's kind of a close bet, you know? That's kind of on the line if you think about it. Right. So, I mean, uh, I think looking at, at it from that perspective, look, uh, you know, helps helps make it a little bit less you know, abstract in my, in my mind. Cause yeah, 78% definitely way too high. And, and like you said, it's also kind of an indicator of past winnings, not necessarily you know how you will. It's like, yeah, I think you got to read it as like a possibility. If, uh, if anybody wanted to give me four to one odds, I'll take shoot Chang right now. Yeah. Right. So four to one odds, you'll take shoot Chang. Somebody might take clay still though. Right. Clay right. needs three. Shoot Chang needs four. That's an interesting situation. It's kind of close to that line. If you think about it. Nice jump. From Xu Chang. Gets separation. And I think that Clay has an open look at the one, but you know, getting the shape on the two is very, very touchy. Yeah. If he able to make this long shot, it's gonna send the cue ball kind of over to that side rail and probably block off his path to the two. It's too risky to take this on, even though it is there. I think he's gotta play the safety here. Yeah, the safety's pretty straightforward. Just cross bank this to the right corner, top right corner pocket, and play the cue ball two rails behind this stack. Yeah, because the last thing you want to do is to make a great long shot and then be stuck, right? Yeah, he played the one rail and he nudged. He got the double kiss. Yeah, he got the double kiss there. Does he come out okay? Yeah, just enough. 
Just held it enough. Gonna, I think so, yeah. It's going to leave an edge, but not, not a makeable ball. Hmm, this is also in double kiss territory, unless he swings it with a lot of left spin. I think that's really the only shot. He can go rail, like short rail first, come in behind it, but it's a little bit less predictable that Watch way. Double kiss. Yeah, nice. Nicely played. Does he get the cue ball there? He does. That was a great shot. Yeah, well done. Uh, high risk of a double kiss there, which would have been fatal usually. Uh, but he was able to get the cue ball out of the way with a little bit of outside spin there. Yeah, see it again. You see, that, you see how close that double kiss was. Well, that he also got a fairly dodge off of that five ball. I think it was going to be a lot closer to the uh, to the three ball. Maybe he doesn't get behind those balls if he doesn't get that little friendly nudge on the five. But either way, look at oh. this. Look at this. Yeah. And shape. And shape on the two. Yeah, it's there. Wow, talk Incredible. about man. How, you know how do you beat that? That's why Clay's the four to one favorite here. <laughs> he can do that. That was amazing. That one ball was really far off the rail. And even more amazing that he was able to get shape on the two after making that shot. And he's just playing safe. Uh huh. Wow. Cold blooded to just hit a dynamite shot right. and then just and play then safe. You. Yep. That is really cold blooded. <laughs> so many players are like, dang, I just made this epic shot. I gotta run out now. You know, it's time. I'm a superhero and just go. I was already think I was that I was that guy. Yeah. It's just now I'm like just I just learned something today yeah. as well. You treat every shot like it's a, a new game. Oh. Can he get behind the nine? Mm, he no, was playing sir. the nine. <sighs> so where the Even where the nine with, and the seven were, I don't know. I I still, if he had the left edge of the two, I like sending that two and tucking it towards the nine and seven and playing the cue ball two rails behind, which is a ton of blockers in the middle of the table, right? Yeah. And a pretty decent chance that if you push it close to those balls, you'll tie it up. You'll make him have to shoot a combo in the worst case, but you can get a pretty good cue ball and play safe behind those balls. Uh oh. oh. Unexpected miss on that two ball. Yeah, I think Xu Chang on the last shot, I think his his idea was try to hide behind the nine, and if you can't, try to bump the nine because then it gets that funny. You know, that makes that run out for Clay much, much tougher when the nine and the seven are kind of wacky, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, now the, right now the combo plays, I think, um, for most of these guys. But yeah, really um, unexpected error from Clay there. But... Xu Cheng going to have to come with another. Oh, he went for it again. He made this bank shot against Dan Louis yesterday to run out the rack. He's playing it as a two-way. He banked the seven, just really similar angle like to that, and was mm. kind of playing to eight ball up table somewhere and ends up ended up knocking it in. Went for it all there. No reward. Yeah, he put all his chips in on that one, huh? And it was tough because... It was a big mistake from Clay, like and definitely an unforced error off of that miss on the two, so he'd want to uh, yeah. you know, talk about another unforced error, maybe. Yeah, being three top now on the six. He should be able to get to this being right-handed. This is better for a righty than a lefty. Just yeah, kinda... and the four ball is playable from anywhere, really, so he doesn't have to work to get position on the four. And that makes everything a lot easier. Uh -oh. oh, you say that, and he worked the cue uh -oh. ball way farther than he needed to. He yeah. could have just rolled that in. Yeah, because anywhere in that, you know, if it stops three feet shorter, he's still got a decent shot at the four. Wow, so a few compounding errors here from Clay, maybe opening the door. They're going back and forth in this one. Definitely not clean, clean, clean pool by any means, but uh, we got action. Yeah. Clay with another masterful kick attempt. Man, he's good at kick, cl uh, clipping the outside edge of the ball on a kick shot. Yeah. And I don't know if he was calling the four in that pocket. That would have been incredible to call that. Uh, but it certainly 
looked like that was where he was attempting to go. And I think Xu Cheng takes on this bank on the four. Yep, he's calling it. Yeah, you make this and it's time to go. Mm. Yes, yeah, right. Just caught it long, caught that yep. near jaw. That's the one that rattles on these wrestlings most often. And those are the ones you want to miss short if you miss them so that they kind of come back and settle up on that bottom rail. Yeah. Oh, and he busts okay. open the cluster. Nice shot yeah, there. You got two for one on that. Yeah. So is, oh my gosh, that's keeping it exciting here. Uh, so in the chat, is the still rolling? Is that Stephen Fullen? I don't know. It might be. Because he says I have to play winner. Yeah, I was trying to get that replay in, but uh, I think under underappreciated is that shot, the one that he played uh, to bust open the nine off of the seven. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot. It's uh, it's crazy how big of a swing it can provide in the match because uh, now he's got a wide open table and can run these balls as opposed to once oh. again playing safe, tough shot. Mm -hmm. Starts Very to nice here. Very nice here. He's a he little roll funny, up side. but he's gonna yeah he's gonna be able to just float this forward. He might get a little close to the ten. Yeah, short side is perfectly fine. Cheat the pocket a little bit if you want. Yeah, it came a little bit short, but should be makeable. Yeah, no problem. The 10 is a good two inches off the rail, so it's got lots of room. Let's talk about cleaning the cue ball, it looks like. Now they're blocking both my cameras. <laughs> They put two pieces of chalk down to ensure that it goes back in the right spot. <clears throat> well, I got both cameras blocked, so I can't see any of this. Yeah, we had uh, yesterday for my Moscone event, we had um, Sam Urbito refing. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. It was, it was kind of fun. You can call for a cue ball cleaning, and he would put his little tool down and clean off the cue ball for you. Mm -hmm. First time we actually uh, had him out here, so... Down it goes. Right. Now, what's the odds going to change to here? I'm going to say 90%. Yeah, you called it 90. 89.29. Okay. So now it's a 9 to 1 favorite. Clay, 2 on the wire in a race to 4. Do you take that bet? You betting on Xu Cheng, 9 to 1, 2 to 4 race? Yeah. Yeah, alternate break. We already saw him break and run earlier in the set, and it's his break right now. So, yeah, I would, I would still nine to one. I would, I feel like those odds are. I think you just like having the the big payout. Is what it sounds like. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's risk a little to win a lot. Sure. Yeah. I like to, you know, when I go to the horse track, I like I like to throw a couple of bucks on the underdog sometimes. There you go. All right. But yeah, I think I think. Viewing the the Fargo rating in that perspective makes it a little bit uh, a little bit more interesting, I guess to say. All right, so we're about to hit uh, what about an hour, almost an hour and a half live streaming up. An hour and twenty minutes for the first match. So dry break, nothing. Yeah, but uh, he does have the window to the one. Yeah, I could to cut this in, but the cue ball is going to be moving. It's cuttable. You're going to lose the cue ball, and there's going to be a million landmines around for it to ping pinball off of. You know, you're you're not really going to have full control over where you're going to get shape if you do cut this in. But I don't see any real other good opportunity here. Yeah, so you can only see the left side of it. So he Let's cuts it in nine. around the nine. Oh, oh what? <laughs> that was beautiful. 
he did have that path, I guess, right? It, it did. Mm -hmm. And even if it, it was banged into something, he probably would have been okay. Pretty natural, actually, just kind of go. He put a tiny bit of left spin on it, based on, look at his tip position, just a little bit of outside. Yeah. Kind of swung it just to miss the nine, and then you knew it was going to be pretty good. He hit it a little bit hard, I guess, if he had missed the 10. So he was assuming yeah. he was going to run into something, right? Yep. You have to make that assumption when you're coming around that way. That you're going to run into something. And he's going up and down. It's going to be too to fast. Yeah, a little hot. Still got to look. Oof. Yep. Oof. Hey, Bubblonia says he'll take clay for a Seattle hot dog. <laughs> that's our that's our standard uh, our standard bet yeah, between me he, and me and Bo. He's gonna have to give up nine Seattle hot dogs to your one. <laughs> yeah, in that case, wow. It's, it's a nine to one hot dog, Matt. You know, uh, bet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't nine know. Nine to one. Eat, Oof. Eat Seattle hot dogs. <laughs> it had to be. It had to be like uh, on an allowance or something. Uh oh. Uh oh. Double nudge. Double nudge. Didn't yeah. want to hit the nine. He was trying to clear it once again, go between the nine and the rail there. Yeah, that was, you know, three shots in a row where he had to go up and down table and avoid traffic. You, you know, you, you can get away with him sometimes, but that's hard to do when there's a lot of balls on the table and you're going up and down. And that was the third shot in a row where he had to use the entire table. Uh, and uh, I think you can see the cutting angle on this four. The camera's a little deceptive usually for me on these shots. I just kind of warrant, uh, err on the side of if you can see it. And if he can, he's probably just going to have a high angle on the five because you kind of saw him prep his cue over there. He's playing around the table again. It's going to be call. too fast. Can Good he get call. underneath it? Let's check the side view. I think he did get there. I think it's there, yeah. Just barely. Wow, what a shot. Yeah, if he gets out of this rack, it's this is a you know highlight reel quality rack. Um, you know, not easy going up and down table on every shot. This yeah. is that was the fourth shot in a row where he had to use the entire table. Yeah, big shot there. If he gets out here, I think this is going to be Clay's match. Just would have been would be too strong of a comeback to overcome it. I'd imagine, but it's not going to go for it. I guess it wasn't there. It must have been too close to the seven. It looked pretty close, even for the for the reverse bank even. So I guess just went for the safety and left a pretty tough shot, but definitely a look at this five ball. So a few different things you can do. Does he roll up on the six? Is he going to try to cut this and snipe it into the side pocket? That would be pretty aggressive. Yeah, I think rolling up on the six is the correct move. The aggressive, what you said is, is I just... Yeah, you might um, have to play this rail, like cue ball into the rail and then to the six. Because, yeah, uh, exactly. We'll have that, enough that's pace. Look yep, bring it to the rail and, and float it right back to the backside of the six. Just, he did not use the rail. He went for the well, shot. He was, yeah, he was going for the shot, okay. Yeah, I don't blame him. Those are those are makeable, but they're tough. And something good can happen if you miss it on the near jaw. It'll just hit that point and kind of float down towards the ten. And he could have still maybe hooked him with the six. So. Yeah, and I understand. You know. The the, you know the motivation to keep Clay off the table, even if you know, mm -hmm. even if you play it safe, like we were talking about. Uh, Any time a good player gets back to the table. Uh, they can make things happen. So if you have the offensive opportunity and you feel good about it, take it. Because like you said, sometimes you go offensive and you can get a little fortunate when you miss. You know, There's a certain percentage of offensive shots that end up safe unintentionally. Yeah, and you'll do it on purpose sometimes too. Shoot those shots yeah. over others because you know there's just an element of safety, especially in rotation, right? Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a pretty clean layout now, though. Except for the eight, it's a little bit close to going into the left corner past the nine, but still has a lot of options if that doesn't go. Just needs to have a good enough angle on this seven ball and be off the rail, and he can kind of put the cue ball wherever he wants. 
I like playing this two rails and playing the eight in the side and kind of finding the gap between the eight and the nine and maybe even going off the third rail. You can also just float this up and down straight off like a stun shot straight up off the second diamond straight down the table towards the spot. Just a little bit different path. He likes that shot too. Eight in the side gets you a really easy position for the nine and then the ten. Yeah, just don't get straight on this nine ball. Straight is okay, but it's just, you know, you got to stretch out and draw this ball as opposed to if you have a little angle, you just let the See, natural this is line the go. Between, this is the difference between a 680 and a 580 is I'm slow rolling that instead of taking it to the bottom rail and back. I'm going to slow roll that to the side. Oh, yeah, no way. And no, yeah, he's going to put a stroke on it and go d d up and down because he's very comfortable with where that cue ball. Because any inadvertent English at all, right or left, if you're not hitting the perfect spot on the cue ball, it's going to go off a bit when it hits that bottom rail. Yeah, but I still think, I feel like the margin of error is just so much bigger with the position window. And then you can let your stroke out, like you said, so you reduce all those slow roll mistakes that people do and make when they're trying to roll it softly. Yeah. I think you're right. It's like it's kind of making those decisions a big difference between okay. the higher level players. Right. I'm going to say 96.4 is Clay's percentage after the score changes. Uh, 0. 0.7. You're close. Yeah. I'm getting closer. Yeah. I'm still so within now, a percent. What is it? 3 to 96 divided by 3. 32. 32 to 1 odds. Clay needs one rack. Xu Cheng needs four. 32 to 1 odds. Do you take that bet? <laughs> yeah, you, you're giving me really, really high payouts here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big hill to climb, so rightfully so, the payout would be high. Yeah. But uh, over the long run, the casino's probably winning in some, some of these cases, so I don't know. This yeah, is almost... The casino, the casino doesn't give you an even chance to win that's true yeah yeah so i guess i'd have to slant it i'd have to be real the real odds to you know yeah you, you can you can only bet on shu cheng and then i'm only going to pay you out 30 instead of 32 right yeah because he will win one out of those 32 times right so yeah in theory in theory yeah oh cluster break even though he broke pretty square in the center he did hit the left side of the rack so the cue ball Drifted off the left rail, and I think that was probably why the rack didn't quite split as easily. Yeah, it is clustered. However, those clusters, are, that cluster is easy to navigate because the four in the side can easily bump that purple five and nine out, you know, so into a shootable position. It's, it's going to be the four, getting position on the five from the four that is the challenge of this rack. But the first challenge is getting position on the two ball. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's the first battle that you have to overcome. I think you got to go two rails on that, on this uh, yeah, one. I don't think he intended to do that. The thin he cut, hit, yeah. So you have yeah, to come up and down. He hit it paper thin. Good safety. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, sometimes you go for the offensive shot, you miss, and you get, there's a certain percentage of time you get a little bit lucky. I wonder if Clay can only see the side of this one ball or if you can see the full ball. He does hit the edge of it. Oh, and this is what you were talking about with his speed of coming off the thin edge of a ball and going two rails around and getting perfect shape for the safe. That was beautiful. Yeah, this is exactly what you were talking about like in the beginning of this match. Clay special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Clay Belvoir special. I don't know if the replay got it. I think I might have waited a little too long, but you can see yeah, the I mean, it's, tail end of it here just rolling up. She has caught the end, end of it. But, um, yeah. It was well played. It's hard to hit the, the thin edge of a ball from a distance. And he hit it absolutely perfect. Oh. Uh, it's all the ball. Big. With a miss there, where's this eight going to go? Even where it is now, I think it's... Well, actually, the five's going to have to go in that pocket first, unless he zips it out well, of there with the, the yeah. cannon. Can this two pass? 
the it's nine? No. Yeah, I, that's what I was looking at. Is I think that the the two does pass the nine. I think because even if you hit the rail where the nine is, you're fine um, because that eight's going to go in if he wants to do go that way. But I don't think he is. It looks like he's setting up for the two in the bottom right corner. Oh, nudge the ten to get into position. I don't think he was trying that. See a little yeah. smirk on his face. I wouldn't imagine that that's what he was intending, but worked out really well. You just see Clay smiling. Oh, that was a little bit weird, but he got there. Uh oh, slow roll time. Yep. Yeah. We're talking about. And so he caught that thin, right? He ended up overcutting it, which is the tendency when you're when you're putting outside spin at a slow pace, right? And that's a shot that I've noticed over time, which is you're trying to hold the ball outside spin. You're going to be swerving thinner on the cut that you're aiming. Um, and so that tendency is to aim it thin. So you have to kind of take that into account when you're trying to hold it nice and slow. Even on a bar box, it happens a ton. You know, you're trying to hold it for a diamond or so, and the ball's just a little bit of a cut. It's deceptive, but you have to aim that thick in a sense. It's kind of weird to look at it and aim it that way. But when you trust the stroke and you slow roll it nice and easy with a good with good spin on the ball, that swerve action happens and you end up cutting it clean to the pocket. It's really weird. I don't know if you've tried that in the past or not, Patrick, but uh, if you haven't tried it out, try, try doing that slow roll, hold it with a bunch of outside spin. And the best way to make it is to aim it like you're going to dog it thick. It's kind of weird. Okay. Definitely something to work on. Uh, yes, you know, hitting the cue ball slowly with a lot of side spin is a very a difficult thing to master because you have to know the table too and how much it's going to actually grab that spin and move it over. And yep, yep. The, dist the distance that you have between your cue ball and object ball makes a big difference on how much it's going to move. And nice shot here. Does he get it? Nope. No. He knows it too. Oh, man. Good try from Xu Chang. He was only about two inches from getting great shape on the four. But pick shot here, and this could sell out the rack if it misses because I see this cue ball coming off and kind of bumping things open a little bit. Yeah. Jonathan here and saying gear effect throw, right? Uh, I think gear effect also has something to do with it. I think it's in addition to what I was describing because I guess what I'm talking about mainly is the cue ball path tends to be swerving a little bit when you hit it slow enough that the spin, there's, there's like a moment where the spin is on the ball and the ball's sliding across the cloth and there comes a moment where the cloth grabs the spin and then that's when you see it do a tiny swerve offline. So that in combination with what you're talking about gear effect throw I think that's when we see those balls go super thin. And just, just remember, every time you shoot, when you miss a shot, outside spin, slow. Did it go thin, or did you hit oh. it thick? And see if you can recognize maybe a pattern overall. And I, I gander to take a, a bet that it's going to be missing thin more often than not. But uh, tough miss yeah. there from Xu Chang. Yeah, that was the big risk of that one, is the scratch, being that you know, the ball was... Really close if he's coming off the wrong side of it. So he did kind of make things a little funny here. Let's see how Clay plays this. Mm, is he thinking about the two, two to three foul situations? Since he can't really cluster. Is there a break? three foul in this tournament? There is a three foul. Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually, uh, secrets tournaments don't have a three foul rule, but this one does. I believe so. Yeah, I think yesterday we saw Dan Louie put Xu Cheng on the third on a second foul and almost got a third. But yeah, I don't know if this is a good three foul situation because I do see him loosening up this five and then having the five eight to play and keeping control of the table. I think if you're gonna play the three foul, you don't send the four away from this cluster. What I like to I would like to do on a three foul is thin the left edge of the four, put the cue ball kind of where the side pocket is on the light on the right rail, thin the left edge of the four, and then send the cue ball down two rails behind the seven. Uh, that keeps the four in the cluster and that it hooks you on a really tough shot. He's gonna break this out though with this four this way. 
That's what it seems like. Yeah, it's just hard to cue that because he's so close to the rail. Oh, he's going to go in the corner? He's got a lot of he's, options. He's looking at all of his options here. He's just seeing how each one feels. Can you? Which one can you visualize, right? And yeah. That's, that's the spot. If you can visualize it successfully, then that means that that's the right one. That's your highest percentage at least, yeah. Yeah. So is he just going to kind of go in and nudge into the nine here? Yeah, didn't get enough and of it, the, though. Oh, he didn't get enough, and he doesn't make the shot either. So, yeah, a lot of, um, I wouldn't say indecisive, indecision, but it just it wasn't the most comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so in that scenario, maybe the safety was, you know, the second safety was the, the play. Yeah, maybe, but I think uh, I think what you said, he kind of just overthought everything because he missed a shot. Also, didn't didn't even get the breakout how he wanted. So maybe just uh, overthinking it a little bit. Could have gone with the first option and probably would have had just as high of a result. But like you said, he's got to visualize it correctly. If he doesn't, it's not really worth taking because you're kind of gambling at that point, right? All right, can Shu Chang clear this up? Add a couple more percentage, a couple of percentage points to his side, if he can. He's a little straight on the seven, so probably going to send the nine to the bottom right corner. Play short side here. Yeah, that last situation was pretty tricky. I think that was all, kind of all arose from the fact that Xu Qing hit that um, the four ball on the way in to that scratch, right? Had he not, had he not nudged those balls together so tightly, I feel like the the breakout would have been a lot simpler. Yeah, that's right. His little nudge on the nine complicated things a little bit more for Clay. Mm -hmm. So he got really straight on this. I think it's take your medicine time. Honestly, yeah, just stop Maybe it there. Just, I might just, yeah, I might just play a stop shot and play the ten from there. I don't know that you're going to get much easier position. There's really no way to get the cue ball away from that rail, unless you draw, unless you do a power draw stroke and draw off the bottom rail and back out. Yeah, but, but there's not much need for that, right? If you're, yeah. you know, if you're playing at this level, this is a manageable ten ball. Your cue ball's not on the rail; it's pretty straight. So put your your good mechanics in there that he's got. Follow through and put it away. Oh, and he oh, rattles no. it. Oh, no. So that's going to be the game. Yeah, this poor guy. Sorry, Chu Chang. A good effort and a great tournament from Chu Chang Chow. Takes third place in this Ox Open tournament. Wow. Yeah, I really wanted to see what would happen if he could close that one out and, and maybe get something going there. But um, ultimately, yeah. falls falls in defeat to a very talented player. Yeah, and commiserations to Xu Chang, yeah. but uh, quite the showing. Did well this tournament. I definitely seen him break out more and more in some of these, taking down some big players. And uh, I think it might uh, be a matter of time before... Uh, he breaks through. I think this is his next obstacle, though. Beating out Clay Belvoir. It's gonna. There he gets his his sweaty wad of cash from Secret, and uh, a congratulations on the third place finish for Shu Cheng Chow. Well played. He had a lot of good matches yesterday. Yeah, a lot of. I think uh, he went most of the B A side. Yeah, so he's his two losses were to Clay. He lost round four on the A side to uh, Clay Belvoir. It's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but 
the top yep. middle match. I think that one was a little bit bigger. It was 7 2. And then went down the B side, beat uh, Bo Bologna, beat Dan Louie, which was a big match last night. And then goes down to Clay once again. Yeah. But uh, so, well played from Xu Chang. And congratulations to Clay, who moves on to get into this much anticipated finals match. Stephen Fullen, who's been waiting a long time to get to play. Well, he's had a lot of time. He's, hopefully he's been over there. I wouldn't be surprised if he was over there hitting balls on a, another table to get warmed up. I do see the... Yeah, I do see the... Um, yeah, he must have been warming up on that back table. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to come in cold on a Sunday morning. And the last match that uh, you and I commentated together was actually, uh, I think, Stephen Fowen and Stan Tarango in the finals of the... Oh, the... The uh, Open. The North Nine Ball Open at 15th Street. Yeah, the on, on the seven-footers, right? Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was I a big match. The last match that you and I commentated together. Um, Were you here for... Uh, we did, oh, let's see. NWPA. NWPA, yeah. yeah, you were there for that, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. I always forget what exactly was the last thing, but uh, there'll probably be many more as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Always entertaining to watch the man, Stephen Follin. He is definitely got a lot of firepower in his game and just a great player to, to watch. And so Clay's got his work cut out for him here. Mm, this He's is a... Gonna have to put on his A game. Yeah, they faced each other in the A side, right? So yeah, uh, this was the hot seat match, actually. So the hot seat match, right? To the okay. match of the hot seat. I think uh, we're literally swapping out a hundred Fargo points too. Stephen Full and uh, seven seven forty. Forty. Okay. So what do the odds say? Seventy six percent for Stephen. So was that three to one? Um, three to one. What do you mean? Uh, oh, here. Yeah, yeah this says three to one. Yep. Yeah, like a three to one odds that uh, that Fallen is going to win. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's I don't I don't know uh, who I would take with that. I might take Fallen. We got Chu Chang coming to the booth, possibly. Oh, excellent! Excellent. Can hey, we hear yeah. Con congratulations on a great tournament. Third place in this tournament is definitely nothing to be disappointed about. Um, you, did, you did a you did a good job. We were we were really hoping that you were going to make it uh, all the way to the finals, though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Clay just controlled the game too well, and I I couldn't I couldn't make a good safety today. Like it's probably I thought too much about you know because because Clay has been. Clean, clearing out tables and no misses, so I'm just thinking, I, oh, I have to, I have to hook him up on something, and then I just lose everything, <laughs> lose control on the keyboard, lose control on the object ball, no safety at all. Yeah, well, we were talking about your game and and how impressive it is to watch you play. Uh, it seems like every time I look up your Fargo, it's higher. Uh, you've been putting a lot of time in and and doing a lot of work to. Get to this point and uh, certainly looking for that breakout tournament where you snap off one of these opens but how what are your thoughts on how you played overall in the event this weekend yeah i think i played um pretty well um in some parts of the game especially like uh in terms of especially like the attacking games closing out uh running out easier rather easier patterns um i think i'm more consistent compared to probably like five, six months ago. Um, but I definitely learned a lot from like last night, from Dan, from Clay, and from watching like Steven. Um, yeah, so so I, I think I know what's the part that I need to work on as well. Mainly like the safeties. Also, a lot of shots 
um, they are comfortable with shooting with like just various powers and spins. Mm -hmm. um, that I know if I use those, um, I will lose accuracy on making a shot. So, um, but for that, if they have that option, um, that will bail them out in some of the situations and make the rest of the pattern much easier. Yeah, it makes sense. It's kind of like a having a variability, like having the same shot, you know, two, three, four different ways and having the same percentage of making it on, on all of them, right? We were talking a little bit about slow rolling with outside spin versus, you know, hitting it with a higher sp speed changes yeah. the aim point. You got to know what happens differently. And if you can do both, they both should be, in theory, the same percentage uh, making. But what it gives you is just flexibility in your game. You can just play so many more options, so many more positions, and your percentage yeah. just go up, right? Yeah, and it can you can tell uh, it's not not only like making a shot, it's also the accuracy of the tip hitting the cue ball. Because mm -hmm. uh, watching like Stephen Clay the, the 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 their game yesterday, or even like Clay's game today, you can see him sizing a lot of points on the rails, going like multi rails, and he's not far off from you know even with uh, you know shooting a ball into a side and then go around the table, he's not far off or two, three cushions, like just where the cube was hitting the rail. So that's that's how he's able to kind of make the pattern easier and easier, um, but still, um, you know, not losing the, uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, still being able to shoot with stroke because um, the cube was going around the table. doesn't have to float anything. Yeah, we were, it, and Christian was just putting up that replay of the safety that he played off the one ball where he just thinned the piece of the one and brings the cue ball three rails around and gets perfect behind the little stack of balls. Yeah, uh, Just a fantastic shot. Yeah, yeah, this is the one right here. Oh, you're actually not on screen yet. But, yeah, I'll show uh, it right now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's the replay. So It was a yeah, fantastic safety. Yeah, I tried a two rail, but uh, somehow just went past the one ball and through the gap. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. I mean, these, it has everything, like, everything is connected. It has, uh, you know, it, it requires your control of your speed. It also requires your tip placement. It requires your aiming. All of those are, are crucial. Um, it's not only like making the shots, it's also very important in making the safeties. Like some people don't think that when making safeties, you don't need that much accuracy, but actually you sometimes you need more because um, you want to hit the exact line for the cue ball rather than you have big area of cue ball, cue ball can land. Yes, yes. 100%. So a great experience, uh, you know, and that's, that's the value of getting into these tournaments with, you know, these very high level players is you get the opportunity to really learn a lot and see how they manage certain situations and i, I think shu chang i think you're you're one of those people that really soaks up that stuff like a sponge and you 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 take that away and and put it in your pocket for future tournaments uh and that's worth the price of admission right there exactly uh like that's that's also why i i also suggest people like if people are watching and you know um don't don't hesitate to get into those opens or higher Fargo's, you know, tournaments because you, you will learn a lot from the higher Fargo players, especially if you're watching up close. And the more like you learn, the more you understand, appreciate what you what they're doing. Um, and if you can, you know, soak them, as Patrick said, uh, and, you know, just go back home and work on the things I feel like they are doing better than you are. Um, that, that's definitely worth the, I mean, just